Hello and welcome to Gym World Worldwide, the number one fitness business news podcast in Nunavut and Rapa Nui. I'm here with Mateo Lopez and special guest, Dr. HC CSCS DPT Esquire. How are you boys doing today? Wonderful. What are those uh what do those credentials stand for? If you don't know, you can't afford it, Teo. You know the rules. Oh, okay. That makes You're sense. gonna have to opt in on this funnel. Yeah. Please Today, click my uh, story. A... <laughs> Link in bio for more information. Yeah, follow me on TikTok. So today we have a very special episode. We found a popular Reddit thread called Seeking Gossip. No, but like real CrossFit gossip that uh, got some likes and shares. And uh, Mateo, Jay, and I all came up together operating a series of gyms in New York City. So we thought we would weigh in on some of this gossip and inject our own. So what I'm going to do mm. here is share my screen so we can pull up the post. This comes from M Suites. Chit chatting with a lady in class, she mentions that a certain member C was always eating. And I'm like, oh, what happened to C? I haven't seen him in a while. She shushes me and pulls me to the side to tell me that our gym owner was sleeping with C. Her husband got suspicious and put up cameras in the back room and caught them. Husband put C in the hospital and gym owner and husband work things out <laughs> and oblivious me just over here chugging my bangs and getting chalk all over my clothes. <laughs> OP, the way I audibly so, gasped when I read this. <laughs> oh my God. So the, so the first, like, what is the always eating part? Is that like a, is that an innuendo or this person just side note is always eating? It's just, it's just like that person who brings like 30 like cliff right. bars to the workout. And like sweet potatoes for post-workout. Sna okay, that makes and, sense. Well, yeah. this one comment here is like, wait, C's husband beat her so bad she ended up in the hospital and everyone is just cool with that? And so for clarity, the gym owner is a woman. woman women are allowed to own gyms in uh, in this country. And uh, so, so <laughs> she was a female gym owner who was sleeping with a male member. And so the husband beat up the male member. Uh, this is not a unique story. Like people on here are pretending like it is. Mateo, maybe you can walk through uh, an experience you had uh, that was similar. Uh, there was a gym that I was attending semi-recently. Uh, I was a member at this gym. I was not involved in the business side, um, thankfully. And uh, this particular coach had been seeing, uh, I guess, a couple members, but at this point, just this one, uh, he had recently broken up with his longtime girlfriend and then uh, was seeing a member or, or, or two. And then this particular member, I think, was uh, claimed she, she was single and not really seeing anyone and was really into this coach and the coach was into her and was going to go visit her when she went back to her hometown and all that stuff. And then at one point... Um, this guy, he's coaching class like 7 p.m. And this guy rolls in through the back of the the gym door and just clocks him behind, like, from behind while the he's back. Coaching? Like, while he's coaching. So I'm coaching and I'm doing the class. A guy comes behind and just clocks him and gets another one in on the way down. I didn't see this. This was Wait, all This is a random guy to too? Me. This wasn't like a member? This is like someone no one knows? This was not a member. This was not a member. Just like a Clocked dude in steel toe boots like kicks the door like Clocked the guy's the... like trying to, <laughs> to oh demo God. like a sumo deadlift high pool. <laughs> yeah, so he hate CrossFit. Him in the back of the <laughs> He's doing the warm up, gets clocked, gets clocked again, <laughs> and then goes down and like is startled and then the dude runs away. And um, turns out this was... Uh, the members, the, the, the members' boyfriend that I guess didn't realize they were blo broken up and was uh, understandably upset that she was uh, having relations with this particular coach. So, um, oh. yeah, and then I was pretty uh, bummed because I loved this coach. Uh, he was my Is favorite coach there. 
He's not dead. He's they alive. They fired him. Um, oh, they fired him. He's like, you know, he's he was on. <laughs> he, no, no, he was on a two-week probation. Gets grounded, gets a punch to the dome, and then loses his job as a result. The, the owner is like, "Yo, you can't lose a fight like that. Like, you yeah, can't work tough. here." This was also the <laughs> seven p.m. class, so all like, of the time. <laughs> yeah, this, what are you doing fitness for if you can't even take a punch to the neck? <laughs> Yeah, you got to be generally physically prepared. That's what CrossFit's about, right? So he was coaching 7 p.m. class too, which was like the busiest class. Like a lot of people saw this. I didn't see it, because but I know about it because the next day I was supposed to have a one-on-one -on -one with this coach. And he had to call me and be like, yo, um, so I can't coach your session. <laughs> kind of weird Here's stuff. Here's what happened. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. And then he got put on a two-week hiatus. So I thought like, all right, well – yeah, the owners got to figure out what they're going to do. Um, and when I talked to one of the owners, it seemed like he was going to be able to – it seemed like things were going to be all right. And then at the end of the two weeks, they're like, oh, no, we found out a lot more stories after digging into this. And, yeah, we can't we can't bring them back. Um, so, yeah, this uh... – So, wait. <laughs> did you ever get your one in one though? Like did you get your fitness back or what? I had to get a sub, yeah. I had oh, to get a man. sub. That's tough. Um, and it and was then tough because with that sub, be, yeah. The, 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 <laughs> the, the, the sub problem. was also <laughs> the sub was also Ta close with Ta the, was that girl. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, the sub was also close with this coach, so like it was like oh. it was sad because it was like and and it was like oh That's... man, like now he's he's taking me away. You know, he's now the other. The other person in this dynamic you know what i mean so yeah it, it, it was feelings were had it was well to sad. close the loop on c our original uh gym owner uh apparently the c was the only doctor at the hospital in town yes <laughs> so, yes he so, was the doctor right so, so, so in your situation into his the only way it could have been worse is like when that dude went to the hospital the guy who punched him was the doctor was the yeah, exactly <laughs> wow. exactly and had to stitch him up yeah uh, God bless small town fitness. Huh? There's another one here that I thought was really great in this sub uh, Reddit was a member confronted me, a coach, about fucking his wife, also a member. I, a very boring and happily married fella, told him he was a lunatic. And then at a recent coaches meeting, two of the other coaches cop to fucking this guy's wife. And they're also <laughs> members. So this coach gets blamed for something that two other coaches... <laughs> <laughs> we're doing at the gym which i just think is great i just think that's a it's just a classic mix-up you know what i mean oh, it wasn't this coach it was these two other coaches not wait, me wait. guy i'm not wait, the one. hold on can you clarify so in case it came out hot because i'm i'm assuming you were excited about this so, one. so wait so there was so a coach got, who got, got in a, trouble you got for... a member named frankie so yeah so, like, so he got, got in trouble while it was really frankie the other two the banging class. <laughs> yeah. No, so no, no. one Frankie's coach is a member. Frankie comes in and goes, "Mateo, why are you fucking my wife? You are an asshole. This is so disrespectful. Like, I pay money here. This is a gym. This is not how you act." And Teo's like, "Dude, it's I just play me. like Fortnite every night." Me? Exactly. And then <laughs> I'm you a go to the staff person. meeting, and, and me and you are high five and being like, "Yo, we fucked that yeah. guy's wife." <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and so. So like he was he was directionally correct but just wrong on the person on the target mm. yeah wrong on the target yeah so how about just, John's again, a classic how about John's method. reasoning he's like listen dude I pay money here that's not right <laughs> that's the only reason it wasn't <laughs> yeah. right yes. he's like I'm a yes. paying member you yes. can't bang my wife <laughs> yeah. yeah if, if I had a comp had membership a <laughs> we'd be giving me something else but but because if I had a working member membership John's biggest totally reason. different but <laughs> listen dude I pay you money this is where I cross this yeah, is where I draw like, the we're, we're gonna here. we're gonna trade services. If we're gonna trade <laughs> services, that's understandable. But it, you know, I'm paying you money. You're giving me fitness, and I'm not giving you my wife in return. That just wasn't in the membership right. agreement. Right, it wasn't in the agreement. It's that true. is that is an enforceable <laughs> breach of contract. Check out uh, gymlawyers.com if you want to make sure your contracts are up to date <laughs> and include that... clauses about not yeah. having sex with your wife. All right, and so this one by Haterade on on also got a ton of attention it says i have a huge crush on one of my coaches he's single straight and about my age i'd ask him out but i'm too awkward and don't know what to say to him also this isn't exactly gossip but it's kind of cool 
A girl from our gym met Mal O'Brien at a road race in Connecticut yesterday. Anxious my am said, dated my coach and we are married now with three kids, LOL. Dr. HC, what do you think about coach on member relationships? Um, obviously I'm in full support of them. <laughs> well, it may not be so obvious to our viewers and listeners, so why don't you break it down for them? Um, yeah, let's get into it. So I, I, I think it's a weird thing. So, I mean, to be honest, obviously nothing's really ever as good come from, uh, like when coaches date members, um, you know, it's like kind of, it's poor business practice. I think typically if you are like a CrossFit style coach, you don't really go out too much. You spend all your time in the gym working out. You coach the members day in and day out. It's like there's a lot of emotion, like high emotion during class. So then like your whole social life becomes the gym. So it's like this weird thing. It's like the policy is like don't get involved with any members. But like the only people you know like become your members in a weird way. And so that, I mean, maybe there's a different thing we could talk about so you're like in this weird catch-22 where it's like don't date anyone but everyone you know is in the gym so it's like tough so i you know it's a weird thing so i'm against it professionally but if I, am i guilty of it yeah i mean my current girlfriend's from my gym, so, I, mean, uh, God, yeah, I can't really i don't know if i'm one to talk about it um but so I your think policy is do as i say not as i do like any good you know, leader or parent, like rules are, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I tried so hard to stop this from happening and it just didn't work. We had like a very strict don't have sex with the members policy. And if I look back at uh, our like five general managers, we have one who's married to a previous member. You are living with a previous member. We had one previous general manager that was uh, dating a member of the gym and then had a, a thruplet with another member of the gym and then swapped that out for another thruplet member of the opposite sex, all, all, all in the gym. <laughs> so uh, whatever, yeah. whatever I did was not what you're supposed to do. This is not an area of business expertise I can give because this was... Uh, I just did an awful job of it because um, I remember Mike, who is uh, married to one of a member who is married to one of our coaches, wrote on my wall on one of his wedding anniversaries. He said, you should feel proud. You are responsible for so many marriages. And then the first place my head went was like, yeah, but like the gyms are also responsible for three times as many divorces. So like, you know, we're pretty like net negative here. Yeah, but you know what though? It's like the marriages that work are so good and strong, you know? It's like, yeah, they're a lot fail, but the ones that stick are like the best ones you've ever seen. It's like the, the bachelor phenomenon. Most of those end in like, like 89% of them end in failure, but like the, 10 percent though 11 percent that succeed it's like they've been together and have kids and they're like you know they're yeah, there forever just like the happiest it, people you know because like it's just, it's well i mean like what's the, the fire, solution you know? right like what's the solution here so you have people in the crossfit community like coaches it's like their whole life the gym becomes members whole life no one sees anyone else anymore right they don't even talk to their old college friends for the most part right that's what happens then you only know that community so like you're like hey don't ever ever date anyone ever again so it's like, what's the solution? You don't hire full time. I don't coaches, know. I guess. <laughs> I see Lady Luck seven five four here saying, "I'm convinced my whole four p.m. class is banging one another. It's full of very young, <laughs> attractive people." And, and then like the next mind... comment is thinking about joining the fun <laughs> question mark. <laughs> <laughs> the other guy under there, this dude is in the 4 some Some innocent flirting never hurt nobody. And then the person under him, this dude is in the 4 p.m. class. <laughs> yeah. So we had a he class. He is like the that. guy. Um, you, <laughs> you were literally a, one of two coaches in that class. And rumor was everybody in that class was banging each other. And, and we come to find out years later that that is like factually correct. So this person's spidey sense is on. Just everyone in the class, like, it was great for member retention until you guys all started breaking up with each other. Like, let's be fair. It was good for business uh, until it wasn't. 
Yeah, but then it was because like once you break up and you're single, you're back on the market and the word gets around. So it's like, and all of a sudden, I, I think at one point you even put on the website, you said something like, let you, I don't know if you said Jay or Coach HC gets you ready for your summer abs or something. He was like, really, really, a hot, like if, if uh, Tinder was around then, that would have been a good tagline for me. Yeah, don't act all innocent, John. Don't act so all innocent, had a coach, John. John uh, promoted this on everything he could possibly promote. He loved it. So I don't know if the part-time coach thing is a good solution either. I had a coach who was part-time, another one who was like <laughs> apprenticing and supposed to be part-time. And um, she was uh, married and had a child. Uh, but um, she hung around with this other coach who she like brought in. They came from another gym as like a friend group together. There was like three of them or four of them. And these two in particular – hung out a lot and he went over to their house a lot and like um would also go into the shower with this person a lot uh after they both coached or attended a class this is and, at the gym to be clear yeah at the gym at the the shower at the gym yeah and so it's like just wrap showers at my gym gonna take a shower <laughs> yeah so the, and there are only two showers right this was like and it was a lot of work John could probably go into that, but how much work it took to get these and, two and very showers limited were showers. Kind of like in the middle of the gym. It's not like they were hidden off to the side. Right. You had to walk through <laughs> the back of class to get to them and walk through the back of class to get out. So like, like you, you couldn't two, you couldn't Olympic like if you're Olympic lifting, you can see like into where the shower area was. Right, yeah. right. You can see the two doors. <laughs> so um yeah, and these two people would go in and then I was like, wait a second, uh what's going on? Are they having sex in the shower? They 100% were having sex in the shower. But it turns out this the, the one coach who was married was in a very open relationship. And like was her husband was friends with this other coach and like they exchanged like Christmas gifts and like hung out all the time at each other's places and like I'm right, like they sure, would do, like, they would do like Shabbat, and then like he would bang the guy's wife, right? Yeah, and then like he, they renewed their vows also during that period too. It was like ten years, and like this Wild. other coach was like <laughs> at that ceremony and like <laughs> hanging out, and so clapping him on. He's like, I love this. You guys are beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> the love is and so beautiful. <laughs> and so like, okay, so it's clear like there's not like I guess cheating going on in where in the sense that like you know, the other person doesn't know about it or, like, is upset about it. I, that's cool, but, like, can you guys just not clog up the showers when, like, we're yeah, this trying to, like... Time, right? Like, this was, like, 7 a.m. class. In yeah. Manhattan, gotta go to yes. work. Gotta shower and hit the... And hit the so go to the it was office. more of, and, like, a sanitary, and... functional thing for you, not so much, like, a moral objection. Well, it wasn't a moral one once I found out, like, everyone was okay with it, I guess. But, like, full the consent. awkward part was people would know pe – right, full consent. But people knew that this other coach was married. They'd seen her daughter, and they probably didn't know the full extent uh, that gotcha. I knew. And so it was like, oh, everyone's just watching these two go in. It's just like uh, – no one has the context here. That's problem number one. Problem number two is, yeah, this is limited shower time. <laughs> and, like, y'all like are, are taking a really long time there. in the shower. Yeah, yeah. So I had to well, tell them to not do that anymore, and it was uh, did they listen or were they just like typical CrossFit members who just go, yeah, okay, nice, and then just keep doing it. That's exactly well, they were what they happened. were on payroll. These are these are employees. They were both employees. Tail, oh tail no, both of these no, people. they were part time. They were part time. That they were oh, still getting paid to coach class, right? No, but yeah, we were paying them. Yes, a hundred percent, we were paying them. <laughs> and the reason we found out. <laughs> was because I and because I heard the rumors, right? So I had to confirm this by looking on the cameras, and I say, "Oh yeah, two people are going in, and two people are coming out." You and the angle, you could have. Oh, well, maybe one's going in one, the other's going in the other. But I could see no one person's going in one of them. That's separate from the situation. So there's only one other place for these two to go. And um, wait, was yeah, it? I had to wasn't like, it like, like when you confronted them? It was no big deal. They were just like, "Yeah, yeah, we bang." Yes, that, that and I was like, it's cool that you bang. It's fine. Like no one's saying you can't bang. It's just right over uh, that. He couldn't even handle that. They were so honest. He was like, oh, okay. Um, 
<laughs> was it like a like an airplane deal though? Like one went in and then there was like a couple minutes and then the other one went in, or did they just like yes, openly yes, walk in together? Yes, walking in together, but then just like yeah, staggered the exit. You know, mm. thought they were being pretty pretty slick about it. So it sounds but, like this isn't a neat, uh, unique story. So on this one, no. it says, found out that a not insignificant number of people at our gym are swingers. Two of them are a married couple with a newborn that broke up because she had been swinging without his permission. They would post nasty shit on Facebook about each other, then turn up at social events together as if nothing had happened. Very awkward. <laughs> then the comment under swinging without his permission isn't that just cheating <laughs> right right yeah. right but then the other one's like well i don't know about the rules in swinger like lifestyle culture like maybe they have different rules but yeah it sounds like it um so fun fact this summer uh do either of you know that there are symbols for for swinging like uh, pineapple is one in the east coast did you guys know about this pineapples i've heard what do you mean <laughs> I, I, yeah. So if I send you a so, fine so in the mail, me. it means game on. <laughs> well, apparently it's like you know, if you have like uh, like an upside down pineapple, it means you're like you're down. You're in the you're in the culture. Oh, no, I you're in the, you're in the vibe. <laughs> and know. like so, um, like an, an upside down pineapple tattoo means like yes, it, it's that's on. exactly what, what it means. Or like do that, I saw, but you don't know, and now you've automatically you're involved in a swinger situation you weren't prepared for. So this is what happened to me over I was at my in-laws I was at my I was at my in-laws over in in Long Island at their at their beach house full swing full circle swinger in-laws let's go come on No 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 the, they took us to like a neighborhood barbecue right it was just a neighborhood this barbecue and 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 I'm and I'm wearing like a, a pineapple button down <laughs> or like a, a like shirt or whatever, and um, and I get approached by this guy and he's like really friendly and he's talking to me or whatever in like a group of people, and then the other group the other couple I was talking to was like, "You gonna tell him?" And, and the other guy's like, "Tell him." I'm not gonna tell him. He's like, "Yeah, you gotta tell him." He's like, "All right, you know you know what's going on over there, right?" I'm like. No, what? And I'm with I'm with my wife. And he's like, yeah. So those two, they're like, they're open. They're like, they swing. I'm like, what? I'm like, yeah. They're the pineapple house. I'm like, what's the pineapple house? Don't you know about this symbol? Yeah, every region has like a symbol that they use, right? In the northeast, it's like pineapples. I'm like, yeah. Watch. In like five minutes, his wife's gonna come over and scope you two out next. And then sure enough, she like came over and like, oh, your dog's so cute. And um, yeah, we were getting we were getting approached very subtly. And I and I learned this the the hard way, basically that you got to be careful with pineapples. To be fair, like I've been out with you a few times, you definitely strike me as somebody who would be into swinging. You know, if you were if you had the symbol and you were a couple margaritas deep, like <laughs> I can see how they made that innocent mistake. Wow. Okay. So, so well, I don't know how to take that, but when you cr you were like not a button down a shirt, but was it like a button down like short sleeve that kind of Hawaiian shirt? Because that yes. would be your first. Like, yes. How many how many yes. buttons did you have over? Yes. Like, yes. It was a Hawaiian I mean, was, kind yeah, of a, like yes. a Hawaiian in like button down short sleeve is your first mistake and yeah he, he was right. probably had a pineapple coming out of his drink there was probably yeah. more buttons unbuttoned than buttoned he was probably I've dancing seen, no like i was with the in-laws i had it buttoned up i had it buttoned up they're like oh this kid definitely swings <laughs> just tail completely yeah and they were just like bopping happy as ever <laughs> Yeah, no idea, no idea. And then the other two people who were there, were like, oh yeah, just you, getting. Yeah. And then and then and then and I, I thought I was getting pranked by them. So she's like, no, no, no. She calls over the like owner of the house that we were at. I was like, no, tell tell them about your friend. Tell them about your neighbors. Tell them about your neighbors. He's like, what? Tell them. Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he walked away. Teo's got this it. trait. It's called woo. It means winning others over. It's like on like we make people take this test called strength finders so it's a great hiring test it tells you like uh what people are good at and Teo's number one is is winning others over so i can totally see in this situation the guy comes up he's like you party and he's like yeah i love partying <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah. I, lo I love birthday <laughs> yeah. parties bat mitzvahs all kinds of parties just weddings trying to, just trying to get on this guy's good side yo those pineapples are sweet i love Pineapple. That's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. No yeah, idea. Yeah, just going, getting preyed on. <laughs> exactly. So wait, what, what ended up happening? It was a mark. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So what was the conclusion of that? Did you just like, oh, now that I'm into it, like I fully consent or what was the conclusion? <laughs> no, like, no. Wow. Once we kind of knew, once, no, I think once we kind of figured it out, we were just like, I think it's a long game too. I think, you know, we, that was just oh, the it's first like a long approach. And, uh, and like a couple. Yeah, things yeah, yeah. And, oh, so man. we didn't, we didn't opt in for the other part two of the webinar. It's like, if not to, we'll wrap this up in a second, but it's like, you said like every region has their own thing. Like who's the organizer? Like who, how does this happen? Like who decides this? I can't even get my yeah, members. I mean, the map? In their app. I'm not the archduke <laughs> of swinging. I just, and I, they told me about the region thing. I, I don't know, but I just know the pineapple one is, I did get confirmed by a couple articles on the internet. That That's for sure. Mm. Interesting. All right. Wonderful. So silver Roxy here says owner of our gym was cheating on her husband. He goes through her phone and posts screenshots of her sex and naked pics to her gym's group page on Facebook. She quickly deletes and comes back to the gym acting like nothing happened. Also witnessed multiple affairs between members, coaches, and I've only been at the gym for four years. Can't wait to see what 2023 brings. So that one was weird because it was like I've only been here for four years. Like yeah, that's I was gonna say a that's long like, time, bro. That's like a, that's like in dog years for CrossFit members. Like four years, you're like an OG member. So I don't. Yeah, yes, what exactly. Yeah, you, you've got at least two herniated discs in that time. Yeah, you've quit, come back, hundred percent. Well, the naked pick, dude. Thing. That's aggressive. I, I. That's like I. That's a first for me for like. A, that's tough. <laughs> That's tough. <laughs> it's just like having to go back to class and just uh, – well, I mean, To be in. fair, to, to be fair, we had a, a, a coach, also a, a one that worked with Mateo. Um, there's, a, there's a recurring mm. theme here. Yeah. And, Pineapple uh, shirt, obviously. Uh, whoa, whoa, well, no. Whoa. She, she <laughs> left and started an OnlyFans, and we found ah, a post right. uh, yeah. like maybe – 18 months after she had stopped working for us. And she mentioned in the post that she was making, what was it? Like 40 to 60 grand a month just from posting yeah. like, uh, like not even like full news, just like semi nudie pics, like a couple times a week. Damn. Right. And she was, a, she was a great coach. We were paying her like 30 bucks an hour. <laughs> and so, yeah. you know, she was a, she was great. Uh, I feel like there's a couple like famous, well, I don't know if famous is the right word, but yeah, well-known CrossFitters that have started, started, uh, shall we say, private, exclusive sites. Well, and she I has did, this uh, service. I looked. Um, so, mm. if you pay her money, like, like I guess it, the thing with OnlyFans is you sign up for OnlyFans and, and you just send like dick pics to the creator. Like that's if you're into that stuff, like that's what you do. You just like pay them ten dollars a month so you can send them pics of your dick. And so right, she right, noticed right. this and conducted a little bit of market research. And offered a service that for fifty dollars she would respond to your dick pic, right? So like you would Smart. send it, then she would a <laughs> rating system, like, if you will. Yeah, like the, you have a really cute dick. Top like, ten like nice dicks of the dick. month. <laughs> yeah, and then, and hey, you know she's probably richer than all of us. So, so but I'm pretty sure her. there's all yeah yes yeah. So mind. Silver Roxy, um, that coach has a future. You know, you should just she's one step away from riches. Before you all run out and start your own OnlyFans page, um, it, I think it is uh, important to note she had a big audience beforehand, right? And this has been a theme on our show. You have to first build that audience and then leverage it into something that you can monetize. And this coach has successfully. So. I guarantee the nudie leaks were some of the most trafficked posts in that Facebook group. I don't even need to look at the analytics. I would bet any amount of money. Right, right. But now she has an audience. And now she can leverage that audience. I wonder what happened then... with the owner, right? Because that last one we were just talking about, it wasn't like a member or a coach. That was the owner who posted the pictures. And then, like, did people leave his gym because that's, like, really poor taste? Or, like, no one talks about Pe that? What happened? People probably joined the gym, but it was, like, the type of people you don't want at your gym. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, like, all the creepy that, – that creepy guy who lives on your street, he joined the gym, you know? I mean, and just for the record, right, it's like for all of these stories we've been talking about, we're in the beginning, little behind the scenes action. They were all roasting me about these articles and the gym that I was a part of and that I own now. But every central theme to your stories, John, you brought up Mateo. 
So I think Mateo is the problem. Even at his new yeah. gym. That guy got punched in the head because of you. <laughs> because of me? <laughs> Clearly. Oh, wow. This is a good time to remind everyone to like and subscribe <laughs> if you're enjoying this content. Leave a comment below on what you want us to talk about next and if you have any feedback for us. But please, uh, if you're talking about me, only positive feedback. I can't really take anything <laughs> negative. My my, I just can't. Uh, I can't emotionally. You say that, so, yeah. but you need it. It fuels you. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that sideways good. pineapple yeah. life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so your boy is constantly searching for stuff to talk about on the show. Uh, one of the places I go to for inspiration is TikTok. Never heard of it. And uh, on TikTok, <laughs> there are various different communities. Uh, so like if you're into knitting, it's called like knitting talk. If you're into money, it's money talk. Um, and as I went through... I found out that there is garage gym talk and uh, I was introduced to Brandon, who is the self-proclaimed CEO of garage gym TikTok. Um, I got an inside look at his gym and it is absolutely remarkable. I want to share it with you guys. Wait, having home a home gym, gym right? is the fucking best yes. thing ever. Yours is great. It's great. Anything like that, like you get like, well, I have the Sorenex equipment. That's the same shit Bert has. And uh, it's like just the fact that I don't have to go anywhere. Like, yeah, just, that's the best part. Just like walk, Joe Rogan open the door. I put that, um, that's what I love. I put that torque, that tank oh, in my shit. torque fitness this tank in my backyard. Sled Dude, I'm just area. pushing and pulling that thing across the backyard in, in the Bro, heat. This is mm -hmm. like and a, it feels like if, I just keep a, I keep thinking about farm work. A sauna. Yeah. Hear about somebody yeah. driving on a farm. Yeah. So I'm just pushing and pulling. I don't even know what that, that is. It's a so lap yeah, pool. that's his. <laughs> Yeah, yes. dude, that's like a that's like a two hundred thousand dollar bill just for his garage gym. Did you see those Captain America dumbbells? Like oh, yeah, there were a couple dumbbell. kettlebells. Yeah, yeah. Dude, Hold that, on, here's another like look. Here's another look. Don't get me wrong. Brooklyn. Being an adult and living on your own is pretty great. The only problem is is that I now have access to adult money, which means I can buy whatever I want. Which means I end up buying shit like. <laughs> 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 the stormtrooper kettlebells were tight. What does this guy do that he has a that he does gym this now? So, so it's an amazing story and one that I do think people can learn from. I don't think there's a lot we can take away from the first segment, but the CEO of Garage Gym TikTok makes TikTok videos about how sweet his garage gym is, and he has 337,000 followers, over 10 million likes. And he was just using it as a place to train clients. But now he's gotten like so popular as that guy, like that equipment snob, that people are sending him like $10,000 machines and cold plunge companies are sending him cold plunges just so he reviews it on his TikTok. So now I would guess this guy's making more money from merch and equipment review stuff than he is from personal training. For sure. No doubt about it. And this sweet. is a great. So we talk about this idea of like, um, we we've talked a few times that uh, program creation is probably going to be commoditized because of technology making it easier, AI coming into play. If you believe that, the one thing that's going to differentiate some gym owners and gyms from others is just like a personal brand. So if everyone's delivering more or less the same fitness, you want to get it from the guy you like and resonate with most. So instead of taking out like a like Jay's got a friend who's currently in the process of taking out what like half a million dollar loan to start a gym, and uh, so instead yeah, of doing that, yeah. So instead of doing that, this guy literally just started making TikToks and building out the sickest garage gym that he possibly could. Built up this massive audience, grew out of his garage, which is probably illegal in most places, but luckily he lives in Arizona where there are no laws. And so he has this nice little business that functions exactly like a, a, a normal gym would. And uh, he didn't have to take on any of the risk. Like I, I'm sure he's in debt up to his eyeballs from the initial build. Um, but to be honest, a lot of that's like hard assets. Like he could liquidate a lot of that equipment. Like there's right. some inherent value there. Right. I have a question for you guys. Um, so I, I was thinking about this the other day, right? Like how many people have created TikToks or Instagrams and do the reels and you trending audio? But like, I mean, realistically, it, for you to become like that person on TikTok or Instagram, like that's like hitting the lottery essentially, right? Especially as a dude who's just doing gym stuff. Like if you're like a 
girl who's doing like OnlyFans and you're like, go to my page, like that's pretty, like you could probably break into that a little bit easier. But even that, like it just blows my mind. Like what do they use in the algorithm to get that many views? And I know it's like build the audience, but there's like, that's what is build the audience? Like that's so interesting to me. Like what did he do? Just start doing those and it just got popular? There's got to be something he's playing with, right? So to be fair, like I have... 18,000 followers on Twitter. So that's my experience growing an audience. But my two cents on this is that most of the fitness content I see is exactly like everybody else's fitness content. So if you're like the 8,000th guy teaching like kettlebell swing formats or like how to swing or why you should wear toe spacers or like taking pictures of your cold plunge, it's just fucking boring. It's not that remarkable. In order to be this guy, you have to be somebody who's like absolutely remarkable, right? He's got the dopest garage gym. You see that and it's like, that's like nothing I've ever seen. Like I literally scour the internet for gym content. Content. Like that's what I do professionally. Um, and I see that and I was like, wow, this is insane. I want to bring it on the show and talk about it. And so other people are probably doing the same thing. And so in order to stand out, you need to be, you need to have your thing, right? Like here's an example that isn't as ridiculous. How about like knees over toes guy? That guy is just like, oh yeah, you should put your knees over your toes. And like all his videos are just him doing like sick dunks. And now everybody's like doing knees over toes content. But that was just like his remarkable thing. Or like P90X and muscle confusion. It's like a different concept, just taking the unique way. And like you own that thing and it's like inherently remarkable. So do, uh, do you think that there's any translation from like, for like, cause these seem to be like, I know uh, last time we went over like the one guy with the big powerlifting gym that created the big thing and, you know, drives traffic there. But do you think for like a normal gym owner, like something that you guys used to own that I own currently, like if I create a killer, like Instagram following, is that really, and I, I know we've touched on this, but does that really necessarily relate or translate to like members in or money in to the actual business right or it's like am i just focusing on that to become popular and build the brand like where's the like where's the game in that for like actual like small business owners or even if it was like a coffee shop owner right like where's the business in that you think do you think that's even worth it for like business owners are like oh this guy's making a lot of shit on tiktok i'm gonna do that it's like you think so that's it depends worth it? on the niche and the goal right so if you are if you're striving to be the best uh like gym owner content creator in the entire gym world like that's hard that's probably like you know eight or nine out of ten hard if you're striving to be the educational source of the south side of hoboken new jersey uh that would be much easier so while i think the average kind of brick and mortar owner is not in a position to like dominate a market and be a thought leader because by virtue of like the market itself there can only be a few thought leaders um, they can be the thought leader in their little town. How does that equate to like dollars? I mean, honestly, my personal opinion, the way we built our gyms was through like paid advertisements. So, yeah. you know, it was something that, that we didn't too, do though. professionally. Like, and in our current business kilo, like we were, you know, we were in the mid single digit millions before we even started thinking about content. So you can get really, really far with just uh, paid market. Yeah, and I think it, I think too, it's um, like you were saying full circle in the beginning of this, it's just more about developing a brand because that's where people are gonna go to. So I think a lot of people get hung up on doing like, they're like, I'll be the, like you said, they do like, I see it in local Hoboken. and people are like, this is how you kettlebell swing. I'm like, dude, there's videos from 2008 with like grainy iPhone, like phones being like, this is how you kettlebell swing. So I think it's more about if my advice to smaller business owners in like local areas, like I think it's more about, you know, you have so many members coming in, even if you do advertisements, but what people are going to check is your social media clearly, right? TikTok, Instagram, all this stuff. So I think it's more about, um, this is what I'm working on, like getting what all that magic that happens inside that you try to explain to people, like we have the best community, like video it record it, make content and get it out. Now, whether that translates to dollars or not, I think when people go to your Instagram, it's like the the business that shows like the fun times, capturing that like energy that you can't really explain in words to people. I think just building the brand for the sake of building it. So when people see it's an easy decision, they're like, I like that place, that looks fun. I think that's the leverage for small business owners. Knowledge. Yeah, I think you're totally right. Like, and we said it before on this, show like yeah likes do not equal cash um 
large audiences can be valuable, but I think to your point, Jay, the focus probably shouldn't be there. Like you're if you're a if you're only if you own a CrossFit gym or a garage or like a warehouse gym, functional fitness gym, your focus probably shouldn't be to be this guy on TikTok where you just have a dope studio and then you're gonna get sponsorships or, you know, free stuff from like suppliers like, you know, uh Rogue or Soren whatever kettlebell yeah. thing. Yeah, sort of, right? Like that probably shouldn't be your play or your focus. To your point, I think it should, like, people are going to go to your Instagram just to see the vibe and to see, like, what it's like, like, what the experience is and, like, sort of for some, like, reviews and social proof. So that's what you should focus on posting. You should po- yeah, focus on posting, like, social proof, testimonials, um, and yeah, that your gym is like even clean like and nice. Testimonials too, like that's something I'm working right. on with exactly. some people in the gym. Like exactly. testimonials too, like how many people have seen it? Like, listen, I follow everyone in Two Brain, and all the testimonials are the same. Like they do get the professional guy in. They probably pay him way too much money for what they're making. It's like the wide screen, like yeah, it's high def, multiple you're camera sitting angles. on the box, and they're like, here. I, this changed my life. I came yeah. in here and I was fat, and now I love my life. And my wife came back to me. It's like. Oh, that, yeah, I get the <laughs> message. She left me for the coach. <laughs> yeah, she exactly. Full sir. They left me for the fit guy, and then I actually got privates from him. Teo, wink, wink. Then she came back to me. But now we're in an open relationship showering together. It's like a full, beautiful CrossFit <laughs> circle. But uh, I think it, like even that, like have some fun with it. Be like, do you have friends here? I don't even know. Like have fun with it. Like whatever your energy is, it's like that's what people want to see. Like put some fun to it. Make them – you know, like we've been doing this for a while. Like you make the fun Christmas video where it's like a joke. If you guys want to check it, go to Hudson River Athletics on Instagram. And one of our friends just made a really funny uh, Santa one with our coach Bobby and a member. It's really funny. He like throws milk on him. It's really good. But I think people should get more creative. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny. It's Bobby. A milking video. Yeah, it's a milking <laughs> video. I don't know. That's more of a pineapple guy Hoboken. kind of thing. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's funny, right? People watch it, they laugh, and they're like, cool. And it's like, I'm not just doing it for trending audio to get, like, reels. Like, I could care less if it trends. I just want people, when they come to our page, be like, that's their coach. That's really funny. And then you mix in, like, really, like, professional stuff in between. But it's like, dude, have some fun with your business. I think people miss that a lot. A hundred percent. I I had, uh, when we were I was running the gym in New York, um, I had people sign up and be like, you know, what, you know, I would ask them at the end, be like, so, you know, what had you, how did you find us? What had you interested in, in, in checking the place out? And she said, like, honestly, I wanted to try CrossFit. And I just looked at all the Instagrams and yours was like the weirdest, funniest, coolest one. And so that's why I came here. I was like, maybe a little wow, too okay, weird. Cool. Well, <laughs> some would say. Certainly and, attracted, yeah, different it, kinds of people at the gym. It was, it was remarkable, right? If you if you go to those, like we got included in a bunch of those like best CrossFit gym in New York City articles, and then if you go back and read those, like the one thing that, like like none of those, uh, the, all those are a scam, by the way. Everyone who does like a best of thing in the city is just like an SEO post. They don't actually go to the places, so it shouldn't be taken seriously. So so let's start there. But if you went back and and read what these people wrote, and, and knowing that the right or didn't go to the gym they just looked at the social media they said like this is a cool looking place with cool people and it's kind of irreverent and it's got just like a fun vibe and so you could tell that like we were doing a good job from a social standpoint of projecting the image we were looking for and being a little bit remarkable because we didn't have like a million dollars to build out like a sick uh, influencer type gym with lights. Like we had to buy a $300 MBA jam machine off of marketplace and like set it up for free. Or like we had to, we hired local muralists to make these like crazy looking colorful murals. So when people would take pictures, it was very clearly like the vibe of um, the area in New York we were in. And so all those things helped us be a little more remarkable and like project an image that uh, drew people to us. Like one of the things that we see with like a lot of these gym owners that struggle, you go look at their Google My Business page, they haven't even painted their fucking gym. Like the drywall still has the like lines on it before they apply the coating. Like if you create like a boring, sterile looking gym and the first impression people get is the images of your gym, like what do you think is gonna happen? Right. Especially if you want to turn around and then charge them like two, three hundred bucks for a membership. Right. Like pain is cheap. It's something you could do in a weekend and something that's going to dramatically change people's opinion. Like I was reading some stat 
that 80% of people make a buying decision before they actually like book their sales appointment. So by the time that they're on their calendar, they've already decided like, yo, I'm going to join this gym. And like at that point, it's your job to just like, you can fumble the sales, like literally all you can do at that point. So there are like these little things you can do beforehand to make sure that uh, you have a much higher likelihood of like projecting a, a premium vibe and a fun vibe if that's what you're going for. The shitty part about painting everything really nice is that everyone punches holes in the wall from kicking so hard to do handstand push-ups. Yeah. They, they're wearing their fucking the lifters yeah. slicing oh through God. the drywall. Dude, and then, I mean, it's in the middle of this it's in this middle of this it's in the middle of this mural and I can't fix it. Yeah. Well, dude, that's well. That's what, like I have one wall blocked off by GHDs where we painted our big skull riv logo and I was like if you guys even put your hands on this I was like, you're going to kill all of you, (laughs) which like to other business owners, don't say that unless you're probably like a CrossFit gym owner or whatever, because they, people can handle that. But dude, I can't tell you how many times I patched it up. I've had to pay like, yeah, guys, don't do that there. Okay. Click bang. Olies. We have a mirror in our gym now. And one member kicked up on it. It's like a, like, not like real mirror, but it's like from, cause it's from the old Functional bodybuilding. Marcus yeah, Philly, kind of people great love job, it. Great like, job branding. He's like, coaches. let's do CrossFit in front of a mirror. And like everyone's like, this is amazing. Yeah, they're like, yeah, it's crazy. But even one of the, the part of the mirror that chipped isn't even from one of the members. One of the coaches, out of all the walls we have, he was like, well, it was closest to the pull-up bar. And I was like doing a workout. And I was like, so you kicked up on a mirror with hard plastic soles? And he was like, my bad. And I was like, hmm, okay, cool. We can work with this. I'll go home and cry for the next hour. No big deal. <laughs> Uh, one of the things that we kind of touch on here that I wanted to add my two cents into is uh, I think Jay mentioned like have fun with your social presence. And I think if you have nothing right now, like the good first step is just like testimonial vibe, right? Like if you look at Kilo, which is the company Mateo and I own, which makes gym management software, if you go look at the Kilo socials, like they're boring. Like it's just It's just like people talking about how great Kilo is at getting leads, how easy Kilo is uh, to use and how it makes running their gym way easier, like what a tremendous value it is. Um, So like stuff like this where we're telling like stories about members was not like an appropriate place to um, do that. But like Mateo and I didn't want to rate like generic marketing content. Like if you look at our competitors, like MindBody is like a $2 billion company. So they probably have like a 35 person content team. Like we would get destroyed by them. So in order to stand out, we have to do something a little more fun, a little more unique, a little bit more in our wheelhouse like this. And if you're like a sole gym owner who owns 100% of the gym, like you can use your personal Instagram, you can use your personal Facebook page to inject a little more personality and have fun. And granted, like it's gonna push people away, but that's fine. Like those people were gonna cancel really quickly when they found out you were you and they bought their membership. So like, I think there's nothing wrong with leaning into your weird and um, using that to attract people who are right for you and push away people who, yeah. who are not. And I'll t- uh, the just for a little actionable stuff, if there's any small gym owners, right, or business owners listening to this, is um, don't worry about the high end, like getting a camera person in. The best advice I got was from one of our former members who's still a good friend of mine who's like top three videographers literally in the world, right? And he was like, dude, get the new iPhone Pro Max. And he was like, it's so good with the, the technology. And he was like, and just use that so you can get right on your phone, right to Instagram. So that was like a huge hurdle for me because I was like, I got to get all this pro stuff. And then I took one of my own practices that we use for members, right? Like, hey, if you can't build a habit, try this 28 day challenge, right? It's not going to be perfect, but at least you're challenging yourself. And I gave myself a 30 day content challenge. So even if I go, don't hit it every day, it's my challenge. And for that month, dude, our members were having it. It was wonderful. Like just do anything, go around the members and just talk to them or make videos and put a, like a song to it and clip it together. And it was, uh, it, it gets you in the habit of it. So like, don't overwhelm yourself with being like professional or whatever, like the buttery bros or whatever, just get a phone, a newer phone with a good camera and give yourself a 30 day challenge and just go film stuff and put it out. Like if you're not putting anything out, putting something out will be better than nothing. And that would be my advice to any small business owner. Just give them the vibe of what you're doing in there. Speaking of challenges and iPhones, like literally the first time we did like a six week challenge, I had to do like a video sales letter and I did it on an iPhone. I got a little mic that could go to it. So it sounded a little better, but I did it on an iPhone and we made like 
over 20 grand from the first uh, time we ran that program yeah. using that landing page with that video. And then I just, I teach gym owners that too. It's like, if you want to make a little short video sales letter for whatever program you're going to do, like if all you have is your iPhone, that's fine. You could just put it on a, like a tripod and like stand in front of something that looks nice and you'll be fine. Like you can get away with that in the, in the, in the, in the like short term. Yeah. So my mentor is Chris Cooper and he runs two brain business.com. It's one of the largest gym mentorship companies in the world. And he, they just passed uh, 22 million in revenue. And one of the things that I learned from him that is, uh, you know, pretty actionable in how we're going about creating our content is that you just got to ship. Like, like if you're sitting around doing camera reviews and watching content strategy stuff and getting anxiety, like that means you're doing it wrong. Like you got to put your head down and start putting stuff out that is shitty. Like he puts stuff out that is embarrassing. And this guy's got like a content team and he doesn't care. Like there's, a, if there's one way to infuriate him is to just like slow down the content machine and, um, you know, it, 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 and hold his post back from getting to people, right? Because as soon as it yeah. gets out there, you get feedback, you can iterate, you have those analytics and, and there's a time to be grown up. And it's not when you're starting. Like if you go look yeah. at some of the stuff we're making here, it is just straight bad. Like the lighting, the background, like all that stuff can be fixed later. Uh, it's going to take you a long time to get good anyway. So to Jay's point, yeah. like, minimum gear just put your head down and start doing something yeah and i mean if you look at any of this stuff right that the the social media people or even any business right even like coop because i follow two brain and chris like on oh, it's like other stuff on facebook and it's just like volume is key like because most of the time most people won't even see everything but so just put it out as much as possible even if it's like hey i'm jay i own hudson river athletics bye and they're like oh cool like and they just move on like it doesn't matter just keep volume volume if you're trying to build it and get in the habit of just putting it out for sure <laughs> so it turns out no bull just landed an nfl investment to expand their product line beyond crossfit uh you guys familiar with noble Yes. Yes, I am. Really? Because you called them, them. You called them. I was like, "What about Noble?" And Taylor was like, "Yeah, they they make they make the Metcons, right?" And I was like, "Bro, we've been doing this for ten years. Like, what do you no, I know they don't make the Met. I know Nike's the Metcons. I just they make a shoe for CrossFit for metabolic yeah. conditioning. And I don't know the name of theirs. I just made so, I picked the name. They're just so trainers. That's what they're called. Yeah, trainers. They're Thanks, literally called trainers. They're like seven hundred dollars, which is um, ridiculous. They're like kids. So <laughs> they're brutal. Do you like them? Like, what was your member feedback? I, I they like kind of came on the scene as uh, Teo and I were were getting out. So what, what's, the, uh, what's the general feedback? I, so I mean, general feedback is like everyone buys them because they have like colorful bottoms or they have like good designs. Right. But like after you buy the like normal trainer, that's essentially like a beefed up Converse kind of deal. It's just like flat sole. It's like the opposite of functional. <laughs> It's like they are like my feet hurt. This sucks, and I'm like, yeah, that's why I don't buy them. But that's what that's why I never bought them. I heard they're just like not great. Well, I was reading about the when they landed the reason why they, a lot of they landed this NFL stuff was because they're actually like expanding their line, and it's actually a cool product because they're like keeping it kind of consistent, but just changing the bottom part of it depending on like which version of it you're buying, so it fits well. And you're never guessing which size fits. It's actually kind of cool. So, I mean, maybe they're getting better at it. I don't know. Well, the company started in 2015. Uh, it was by old Reebok executives. And mm -hmm. uh, if you're new to the CrossFit space, Reebok was like the title equipment company for CrossFit. And Reebok was owned by Adidas. That year, Glassman made a public statement saying, like, I'd like to see Reebok sold. I want them, like, someone fresh, exciting, young, willing to enter the modern era. Like, basically talking shit, saying that Reebok was kind of lame and he wanted cooler stuff for CrossFit. And so Noble was launched. I didn't realize, like, how quickly this company was growing. So last year, they raised money at a $500 million valuation and grew, like, 80% year over year. So they're just on that, like, straight up like startup hyper growth grind and um in august they announced they were the official combine training partner of the nfl and then um 
32 Equity, which is this venture capital fund that's actually like owned by the NFL team owners, uh, mm -hmm. injected some money into them. And so this was the part that was crazy to me. Like the NFL owners created a venture capital fund to invest in businesses that partner with the NFL. Like talk about a big brain play. I mean, yeah, that totally makes sense. They've invested in like, or, or things that are, could be related or could help the NFL. Like they've invested in clear, like the security thing, which makes sense. They have these giant stadiums. They need security. Investing in clear makes sense. They've invested in like stuff that's just like kind of tangentially related, but that is still like connected or useful. And so, yeah, like ecosystem I, that, stuff. Exactly. Um, the crazy part or not the crazy part. Something I thought was interesting was in this article, um, you know, Noble Lands NFL investment expands product line. The brand sells performance beyond CrossFit. I don't know if that means they're just diversifying or if it's like I'm trying to I'm trying so to I actually was a little reading bit a lot about this. So it's interesting. So I it's so everyone like john was saying like they were created this was created by two uh former reebok execs which was like essentially the go-to shoe for crossfit yeah so you have like these og crossfitters which i feel like from when all of us started like in the grassroots days there's not many of that left so that even i find myself like i talk to people about old stuff like rich froning videos that were like hyper popular and they're like wait what video i'm like you've never seen that so anyway it's like to hear that these two guys that are like OG Crossfitters, Reebok, like from the roots of it, I was reading about their their like uh, mantra with the acquisition from the NFL, right? And it was like it was kind of cool to hear that and hear some of like the old vibes of CrossFit in even their growing business model that they were like, if we can create a trainer for the most elite athletes in the NFL, then we can meet the needs of all of our customers so it's fu it's cool to hear them bring in this like crossfit mantra into their even their business growth model and that's mirroring the crossfit mantra of like we program for the best and that'll meet the needs of everyone so i think that's kind of cool to off your point like what they're leading their even product design for i think that's really cool i think that is sweet um i also think that they're recognizing this this trend, we've been looking at articles recently, like Roundup articles for the last year from different gym management software or different companies like ClassPass just had one that said, you know, strength training is uh, gaining in popularity while some of these other s concepts or studios like cycling and yoga are, are kind of declining in popularity. And uh, everyone's trying to capitalize on this on this trend, you know, and clearly Noble is as well in trying to prioritize performance, right? With running, strength training, um, these elite sports i think they're even creating um shoes for like pickleball court shoes and things like that where these other kind of uh other sports that are growing in popularity as well like they're just trying to catch that wave and it's obviously working and they're they're growing and it's just wild to see all these companies do really really well that came from the crossfit ecosystem that's but but at the same time crossfit and affiliations are like at a time when they're declining you know it's just I don't know what's going on at HQ and why they can't capitalize on this, uh, you know, this this growing popularity of strength training that everyone else is seeming to be able to take advantage of, and and there's something I don't know broken inside HQ where they they can't quite figure it out. RX Bar is the other one that comes to mind, where like yeah. they started just like hucking bars out of affiliates, and then a few years later sold to Kellogg for I believe six hundred million dollars. Rogue is really? also a company built out of the CrossFit ecosystem. Like they started yep. selling boxes and jump ropes and they're, uh, I don't know what Rogue's valuation is, but if I had to guess, it's probably in the nine figures. So, um, and, and then it's, I think Glassman got a nine figure exit. I'm not sure there, but um, yeah. So, so everyone's getting nine figures except for Berkshire partners. So, you know, maybe they should talk to the noble guys. Yeah, maybe. I mean, um, at least they're innovating because I think what's cool too is like I was reading an article about Noble and it's – you could tell they're like from the CrossFit background because they kind of like very professionally talk shit about Reebok and Nike. They're like, we don't want to just keep making the same shoe with different colors, right? It's like they go after them. I'm like, yeah, which is why I kind of stopped buying them. Um, but the Nobles, I, I hope the trainers are good. You've got that new company, TYR too, but they just kind of look like old – weird trainers too i don't know i feel like the shoe space needs an innovation hcs 
thoughts with HC. I'm, I might go into business with Teo and make a shoe. <laughs> Nothing but pineapples. All right. One more quick segment before we get out. Uh, our, uh, our trans reporter, Mateo Lopez, was hot on the scene and found out that uh, male crop tops are coming back. So, scene on the left, 80s hunk, for whatever reason, this was the vibe, you know, like, jorts, the high sock crop, uh, games athlete Nick Matthews uh, competed in crop tops. I think they call them half tees now, that's the, that's the uh, correct yes. Roman culture. Um, what do you guys think? Is this, uh, is this trend here to stay? So, I do like how, like, a couple years ago, it started with the shorts, right? The shorts came up. They became shorter and shorter first, right? You saw the five-inch seams. John was a big proponent of the three-inch seam. You see um, brands like Chubby's kind of exploding out of the shorts becoming shorter trend. And now the shirts are also becoming shorter. So it's just a natural progression that I think uh, totally makes sense. I'm bullish on the crop tops. There's actually a, uh, a few outlets and blogs have been um, reporting on this trend over the last year. Uh, but recently, Vogue came out with an article that said, next summer's fashion statement, men will partially strip to reveal a resolutely masculine part of the body, the torso. Uh, you'll see things like, uh, uh, you know, translucent pieces, uh, and then, of course, the crop top. But it's so like, I think it's here to stay, and I'm bullish What's for weird, it. though, I'm it's bullish like... about the crop top. Especially, like, we got, like, a CrossFit Games athlete. So, like, it went from, like... Like, shirts in normal gyms, right? You couldn't do that. Then CrossFit came out. And then there wasn't a shirt to be found. But now we're going, like, half shirt. It's like, are we we're actually right. taking a... We're classier now. Right. Are we actually taking a step back performance-wise? Like, that shirt gets you a little extra hot, overheats the system. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of the crop top. I think you go I'm no assuming, shirt. Uh, I'm assuming for the games, they probably have to keep their shirt on, right? For, like, parts of it or something, at least for media. No. I don't think so. Like because half the field like has no shirts out? on. Maybe when oh, they walk so, out. Or is this like so this a bigger just statement? Like a vibe. This guy's a vibe. Yeah, he's being for extraordinary. Sure. It's social media. We're here talking about it. He's remarkable. And let's like let's see like as we're talking like who who wore it better though the left or the right like is the throwback like that's more than a crop top that's a tank top on the left. Do we I, go? I think either? left side. Yeah, is I think left side's where we want to be. Yeah, left side, yeah. strong side. I, uh, I found a guy on... <laughs> oh, yeah. With a high <laughs> sock? Yeah. I mean, I found this guy on TikTok. He was rocking his, his crappie. Hey, what's up, guys? This is just a PSA that I'm a fucking unit. <laughs> and so I thought for sure there would be hate in the comments. I go and pull up the comment section, and it is just all these people being like, Oh my God, this is awesome. More men in crop tops obsessed with this look. This is the only acceptable look in the gym and for guys in general. audience reached. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just like a bro. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, 2023, spring, summer, you're going to see nothing but crop tops. Are you guys going to make a kilo crop top or what? Uh, I'm just going to cut this into a crop top. I already hey, listen, did it. You do it. I literally already did it. Link in bio. Link. <laughs> The link you're looking for. That's all the time we have for today's news. Tune in next week uh, for more Gym World worldwide exclusives.